Good morning. Good morning, Miss Tellus. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. I'm going to give everyone a few more moments to get in here. Willis, good to see you all on here this morning. Give me 60 more seconds, we'll go ahead and get started. Once again, I want to say good morning to everyone. Thank you all for uh, joining us uh, on our live broadcast this morning. Um, I'm excited to, uh, to share. I'm excited to have you all on here. We all are uh, seeking uh, revelation uh, from the Lord as it relates to how to move forward, what we need to do. Uh, there are some things that um, I'm sure I need to be changed in all of us, and only God has the answers um, that we are seeking. Um, we are in some very tough times, and I've uh, pretty much prayed and asked God what it is that he wants me to share uh, with his people today, and um, I'm only going to give what he gave me. Um, I have I have three things that he wanted me to highlight uh, for the people this morning, and I'm going to highlight those things and however God moves and however he deals with you as it relates to those things that uh, he speaks through me today, uh, that will solely be uh, between you and him. Uh, but I have a responsibility to, um, to give to you what he gave to me today. And I'm going to do just that. Uh, once again, uh, I'm certainly excited and always ready to share uh, with God's people. I hope that everyone is doing well. Um, I know that a lot of people's spirits are low uh, because of what's going on in our country, in our world. Uh, we just have a lot going on right now. Um, and uh, and God wants me to speak 
uh, to those things, speak to those things that are ailing us right now. And I'm going to, um, first of all, let's just pray. Let's just pray and ask God's blessings upon us. Um, I'm very sensitive to what he uh, has given me today. And I pray that you all be sensitive and prayerful as well. And so let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much, first of all, uh, for waking us up this morning. Uh, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace that has covered all of us. Uh, we honor you. We, we, we lift you up. We exalt you. Uh, we say that you are God and there is none like you in all the earth. The earth is full of your glory. Great is your faithfulness toward your people. Uh, God, we know that our country is in turmoil. Our spirits are vexed. Uh, there's just so much going on right now, Lord, and we just need you to step inside this mess and that a miracle will come out of it, Lord. We know that uh, you are the light of our salvation. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to keep our eyes fixed and focused on you. Uh, we ask that you would lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Uh, we ask, God, that you would cover us uh, in the blood of your son, that you would keep us, uh, our mind stayed on you. We pray that you remove those uh, those obstacles, those things that may be burden, uh, burdening your people right now. God, we pray that you would lift every burden, uh, that you would uh, fix every heartache. We pray, God, that you would bring peace uh, to the land. Uh, although we know that the scripture says that you will bring a sword. Uh, God, we, uh, we accept your will whatever your will is, God. And even when we don't understand your will, we pray that you would help us to still embrace it uh, because uh, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. And we come also, uh, Lord, asking uh, that for healing in the land. We pray, God, that you would heal people who are struggling with COVID-19. We ask that you would heal people who are struggling with their health in any other area, God, we pray right now, God, that you would show up as the divine healer. Uh, we know that nothing is too hard for you and that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. I pray, God, that you would give us vision, that you would show us, God, uh, what to do, how to move and how to be strategic in how we move, God. We pray uh, that you would just teach us your ways, God, that we would lean and depend on you, that we would not get so caught up in man and man's agenda that we forget uh, about your agenda and your your mandate for our lives. We thank you for uh, your mercy that covers us every single day. Uh, we pray, God, against wickedness in high places. We pray uh, and we know that you are bringing down Babylon. We know that you are uh, that you are working, God, even though we might not understand your every move, we might not understand every decision and, and how you allow certain things to take place. God, we trust you even when we cannot trace you. I pray for that person, the Lord, who's in their home. Uh, they just don't know which way to go, which way to turn. I pray that they will look to the hills from which comes their help, knowing that their help comes from the Lord. We just ask that you will cover us, God, and that you will lead us and that we will be sensitive to you in this time. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor and the glory. We pray for uh, whatever is going on in the White House. We pray for every leader. Uh, we pray, God, that um, that you would just have your way. And we know that you will. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. OK, so once again, I want to say good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join uh, join us in our live um, church, our live broadcast. Uh, and I want to start by uh, having you all to turn to First Thessalonians five seventeen, and I'll just use this verse as um, as our foundation uh, to take off this morning. And I want to talk about uh, I'll just use for a subject: keep praying uh, for vision. Keep praying for vision. Uh, somebody type that in, keep praying for vision, because I believe that God is still speaking uh, in this time that we're in. Although we are in perilous times, we are in tough times. I still believe that uh, a, rem a remnant of people will still be able to hear God, even in the midst of all the chaos. And I promise you, uh, we are certainly in a season where you need directives from God. You need to know what to do. You need to know what God is saying. And you need to be sensitive to what he's saying. Uh, granted, there is a lot going on. A lot of things are simply a distraction 
uh, to what God is trying to say to his people uh, in this time that we're in. And so we need God to give us vision. We need God to show us, to, to, to lead us and to guide us because, because if we don't let God guide us, if we're not sensitive to where he's trying to take us, then we're going to miss some major events. We're going to miss some major things that God wants to do uh, in our families. We're going to miss some things that God wants to do with us individually. And I believe that we also miss some things that God wants to do with us collectively. And so uh, once again, uh, let's be very sensitive to uh, what God is saying. I believe that even in the midst of this pandemic and all that is going on, that God still wants to prosper his people. Uh, God still wants his people to move forward. You know, he does not want people to put um, uh, put breaks on what he's called them to do. People who are in ministry uh, need to continue to serve, uh, need to continue to be faithful, need to continue to uh, <clears throat> to follow the mandate of God. Because when God puts a mantle in the hands of his people and on the life of a person, that mantle will sustain them through any pandemic. You know, so um, there's nothing too hard for God. And I need God's people to remember that <clears throat> there's nothing too hard for him and that all things are possible uh, with God. You know, so once again, First uh, Thessalonians 517 says, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing. That is a simple verse um it's not the shortest verse but it's next to the shortest verse in the bible pray without ceasing um uh, we we are certainly in a time where we need to be we need to be prayerful uh, not simply just go into a place and pray but we need to be prayerful minded we need to be prayerful minded we need to be very sensitive to what the holy spirit is saying uh and what he's trying to uh, accomplish in this season because it's very easy to get in your flesh it's very easy uh to think that you know uh, what you're doing is very easy to uh, take your own route in your own way and miss everything that God wants to do. So um, there are and I need you all to, to really hear this. There are blessings even in this season. There are blessings even in this season. But we don't want you to miss those blessings because you are not connected to God. It's very important that you stay connected to God because all of us at some point are going to connect to something. But in this season, you need to stay connected to God because there's too much chaos for us to not be connected to him. We are certainly in a spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 talks about this spiritual warfare, and this is a warfare uh, that is not a flesh and blood fight. If, we're, if, if, if you are spiritual minded, uh, it's very important to, for you to be cognizant of the fact that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We rep all of these fights and all of these battles that are going on right now, although uh, it looks like man is fighting man and women are fighting women and people are fighting people, it's so much deeper than that. Uh, Ephesians talks about a spiritual warfare. There is wickedness going on in high places, you know, so if you're not careful, you will think that man is um, that 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 this is about man when really this whole thing is a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual warfare and only a remnant of people are going to catch that. And so that's why I say be prayerful. But I want to get go ahead and get to the crux of what the Lord wants me to share with his people today. There are three things um, that I want to speak on and I'll speak on these things and uh, I'll get out of your way. One, um, he wants me to talk about uh, standing for what is right without doing what is wrong. That's one thing that I'll come back and speak on. Secondly, he wants me to talk about uh, the importance of remembering the power of God, the importance of remembering the power of God. And lastly, he wants me to encourage and motivate his people to not live in fear and to be reminded that God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Uh, so, uh, my first point, uh, stand for what is right without doing what is wrong. As I was reading, uh, I went to Micah, uh, which is M-I-C-A-H. I know that's not a familiar uh, uh, book to a lot of people. Micah 6, 8 says this, and it talks about there are three things that the Lord requires of his people. There are three things that God requires of you. Actually, the text says, um, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. 
And so I want to talk about these three things that God requires of us. Even though we have a lot of chaos going on, you cannot lose focus of God's expectation of your life. Okay. You don't drop God's expectation because you disagree with man. Okay. God has placed a mandate on your life. That means that God has placed a calling on you. God has placed a responsibility on you. God has placed, um, God has placed, um, God has placed certain boundaries around your life. Uh, and he's given you a mission that you need to carry out. And that mission consists of at least three things. One, to do justice, to do justice. What does it mean to do justice? To do justice means that you do what is right in God's eyesight. Okay. That's what it means to do justice. You know, there are people uh, and I, I believe that this country is really racing very quickly toward a race war. And if we are not careful, uh, we will forget that God has called us, his people, uh, to a holy and higher standard. We have to make sure that we are not just going with the flow. We have to make sure that we are not just jumping in battles that God uh, has promised to fight. We have to make sure that we have not lost focus of where God has called us from and what he has called us to. Okay. When God called us, he called us out of something and he called us to something. And not only did he call us from something to something, but he's also placed a, a specific calling on our lives to be a blessing to his kingdom. So we cannot lose focus of that because we can get in this battle and get in this war that's going on and, and, and we can, and our callings can become null and void. So we have to be careful not to lay down the mantle that God has placed on our lives. So please type that in. Do not lay down your mantle. This is not a season where you need to lay down your mantle because there's something that God wants to accomplish through you. And in order for him to accomplish that through you, you have to stay focused. You have to stay focused. It is imperative in this season that you can see past all of the debris, that you can see past all the smoke and that you can see past all of the distractions and still accomplish what God has called you to. You got to remember that the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. It does not mean you don't have an opinion. It does not mean you don't feel some type of way. It does not mean that you won't get in your feelings at times. It simply means that even though you might disagree with some things, even though you may feel some type of way, even though uh, what you what God has revealed in this season is very heavy, I am still determined to follow the Lord through all of this. Because if I lose focus of him, then I'll do just like Peter did when he took his eyes off of Christ. He began to sink immediately. And we are certainly in a time where people are sinking because they refuse to crucify their flesh. People are sinking because they're in their feelings. People are, are sinking because uh, they, they don't know how to manage their own feelings. You have to learn how to manage your own feelings. Even when you disagree with things, you still have to properly manage your feelings and only God can help you do that. You have to be careful with turning to wrong to the wrong people for advice. Uh, as a matter of fact, Psalm chapter one, verses one through three talks about uh, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You have to be careful and make sure that you are not taking counsel from people who are telling you the wrong stuff. The Bible says you will be blessed if you dismiss uh, ungodly counsel. When people are trying to co coerce you and convince you uh, to move in your uh, feelings and to move in your flesh and to and to uh, make every decision based on how you feel. There are some things that you have to dismiss, because if you learn how to dis dismiss some things, then you will maintain what God wants to do. And he wants to bless your life. Not only does it says how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It says that you got to be careful not to even stand with them because if you stand with them, your next phase is to sit with them. You know, you don't get comfortable sitting with somebody unless you first become comfortable standing with them. So you better be careful who you surround yourself with because surrounding yourself with the wrong crowd of people can cause you to miss out on blessings. And I believe that God not only will bless you, but God will bless generations that come that will come behind you. 
You know, so you don't want your children missing blessings because you were acting a plum fool. You don't want your grandkids missing blessings because you didn't know how to manage your feelings and because uh, you you were not willing to break that family curse. You don't want generations that are coming behind you to miss everything that God wants to store up through you. And so in order for that to carry out and to take place, you got to be careful how you move. You got to be careful how you move. You can't listen. There were a lot of times that crowds followed Jesus, but Jesus typically gave attention to the one or he gave attention to the two or he gave attention to the, uh, you know, to the, that remnant of people who were not just a part of the crowd. You know, so you got to learn how to be distinct. I mean, to be distinct and to be set apart because God has called us to sanctification. And the word sanctification does not mean that you have everything together. It does not mean that you're, you're crossing all of your T's and dotting all your I's. It doesn't mean that you don't get caught up in sin at times. It simply means that uh, that God has called you and God has placed something on your life. And, and out of all the people in the world, God has chosen you and he has set you apart to be used for his glory. And I believe that the reason wickedness uh, is more prevalent in the land today is because those people that God has set apart are shrinking. We're shrinking and we're hiding and we're afraid to take a stand for what is right, you know, and because of that and our voices have become silent, then the wickedness is prevailing, you know, so it's really time. And I was talking to another a brother the other day and we both were asking, like, where's the church? You know, why is everybody silent? Why is everybody shrinking back in a time where people really need to hear God's voice? Like, where's the church now? You know, why, this is not a time for the church to be silent. This is not a time for the people of God to be silent. This is a, is a time where we ought to be standing up. This is a time where we ought to be speaking from the rooftop because people, people are desperate for a word from the Lord, period. You know, because it's too much going on. There are people being that are depressed right now. There are people who don't know which way to go. There are people who are frustrated. There are people um, on the verge of backsliding and just turning away from the gospel altogether. And so it's very important that we learn how to speak, uh, speak uh, truth to power, uh, that we speak a, rever a, a relevant word, you know, in the time that we're in right now. And I know that a lot of preachers want to preach those hype sermons where everybody's shouting and everybody is running, but how God is speaking to me, I don't think we're in that season right now. I, I, I know that we still should shout and we still should run and do all that stuff. And you can do all that even outside of a church. But what I'm saying is that we've had so much of that, that people are ill prepared for what is going on right now. One of the reasons that people cannot handle the pandemic and one of the reasons that people um, have become so discouraged in this time is because when the word of God should have been taught, people were too busy shouting, shouting themselves into, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a time and a season for, ev for everything, every event under the sun. And we're in a time where people actually need to be taught. And so, one, we got to stand for what is right without doing what is wrong. Uh, one, you got to do justice. What is doing justice? To do justice means that you're doing what is right in God's eyesight. Pleasing men and women will throw you off balance. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of trying to please men and women. Come on. We're always trying to make somebody else happy. We're always trying to accommodate for other people. We're always putting our lives on hold. We're always putting our callings on hold uh, to appease other people. But doing justice and doing what is right in, in God's eyesight means that you're going to have to say no to some people. Okay. Regardless of how the people you're connected to feel, you got to make sure that your ultimate goal every day is to please God. Yep. People will put more pressure on you to please them than God. And and listen, that season is over. That season is over because let me tell you something that this pandemic has done for a lot of people. This pandemic has been so revealing. 
This pandemic has been so revealing. It has a lot of friendships have been broken up. A lot of relationships broken down. A lot of churches and church members crumbled. A lot of things happened. Uh, a lot of things were revealed in leadership in the White House, you know, all across this nation. Because what God has done, God has pulled the veil and has allowed us to see things for what they are. God has pulled the veil and listen, listen, all those years that we have been praying, God lead us, God guide us, Lord protect us, Lord, uh, you know, reveal to us those things that we cannot see. Now we are in a season where God is, is doing just that, you know, and guess what? We can't handle what we see. We having a hard time with what we see and we walk around and act like we didn't know that all of this stuff that we seen from the White House to our house go on. We, we already knew that this stuff was brewing. OK, the second thing God wants you to do, not just to show justice or to do justice, but also to show and ref reflect loving kindness. Kindness is not acting like nothing is going on. You, you, there's a whole lot going on, but God still expects the fruit of the spirit to manifest even in the midst of what's going on. Lord have mercy. God still expects the fruit of the spirit to manifest even in the midst of all the hatred, all the fighting, all of the chaos going on. God expects you to be an example. He expects you to reflect him. He expects you to be kind to people. That, that's right. He, he expects that from you because kindness is one of the fruit of the spirit, loving kindness. And also long suffering. The same thing that God demonstrates toward us is the same things or the same uh, fruit that he wants us to demonstrate toward other people. Loving kindness, uh, long suffering means that you suffer long. You can put up with a little bit more. And listen, we're in a time really where our patience are really short. And the reason our patience are short is because we're trying to do this thing on our own. You know, you can't you can't love your enemy and feed those who are hungry and give them drink when they're thirsty in your flesh. Come on, somebody. You can't do that in your flesh. It's impossible to do in your flesh because in your flesh, you'll be just like everybody else. But God has called you to a higher calling. Mm, somebody type that in. God has called you to a higher calling. You as a believer, cannot go with the flow. I know you want to go with the flow. I know you want to, I know you want to get violent with other people. I know you want to uh, call people names. I know you want to get in your flesh. I know you want to show them that you're not going to be messing with me and you don't know who I am and where I come from. But God says that doesn't represent me. There is a way to get your point across and still be in alignment with God. Furthermore, some battles are not meant for you to fight. Some battles belong to the Lord. Sometimes you need to war in the war room. Hello, somebody. That means that you need to pray without ceasing. That means that when, when God begins to reveal things to you, because I'm, I'm in a, I'm at a point in my life. I believe that God is revealing the most to those who have the most intense prayer life. God is revealing the most to those who have an intense prayer life because what we need right now, we need people who are prayer warriors and a prayer warrior is not an ordinary prayer uh, person that just pray. They don't just pray on the go. They find their place. They go in their closet. They go in the war room and they war against these evil spirits in high places. These are people who will find themselves under attack. These are people uh, who, who go through a lot of frustrating moments in their life. And the reason they go through all of that frustration is because they have one of the most intense prayer lives. They are warring against demonic forces. They are warring against uh, witches and warlocks. They are warring and they are praying for families. They are praying for nations because some of these demons that we are praying against are high level demons. Hello, somebody. And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You can't just put a little uh, uh, now that I lay me down to sleep prayer on a high level demon. 
You got to go in the war room. You got to know God. You got to know scriptures. You got to cut that thing down and you got to cut it down by the word of God. And the only way to do that, you got to first know God. You got to first know God and then you got to know his word. I'm not saying that you got to be able to quote the Bible backwards and forth, but if you're going to be a proud warrior, you got to study to show yourself approved. You got to be able to open this up and say to the enemy what is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was being tempted by the devil, he every time he quoted something, he quoted the word of God. He didn't even, he didn't, listen. If he says that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And if he knew he had to quote scriptures and know the word of God, then how do you think you're going to beat the enemy if you don't know the word? You got to know the word. If you can remember these rap songs and every lyric and every verse and every bar and all of these songs. And if you can remember every commercial that they pr uh, play on television and you can remember the latest gossip that somebody is sharing and what's going on in somebody else's house. You ought to be able to remember something that's going to set your family free. That's going to set your kids free. That's going to build a hedge of protection around everything that you love, which is the word of God. If you even want your children to survive in the schools during the day that we're living in, you got to know how to pray. If you don't know how to pray and if you don't know how to wage war against the enemy, you will come home and your kids will be speaking another language that you ain't never heard before. You know, the kid that left your house will come back a whole different kid. You got to know how to go into the enemy's territory and take back what he's trying to steal from you. And how, how are our kids going to be able to make it with parents who don't know how to pray, with grandparents who, who don't even know God? Everybody's acting like they don't need God. Man, I need God every single day. I need him for the air that I breathe. I need him. I need him for every step that I take. I need him to drive down the street today. There's no way I'm going to act like I don't need God. You can act like you don't need him if you want to. And when you need him, he might be slow to show up because you ain't you ain't called him all your life. And now that you need him, you expect him to show up and be your genie in a bottle. You got to you got to know him for yourself because there are benefits to being connected to our heavenly father. There are benefits be, to, uh, to being connected to him. So you got to do justice, love and kindness, and then you got to walk humbly with God. Walk humbly with God. Make sure you stay humble. Stay humble because the Bible says pride goes before destruction. Arrogance will throw, arrogance will destroy your witness. Arrogance will destroy your witness. God needs you to be a witness to people, but arrogance will destroy that. And so in order to be effective, for God, you have to walk in humility, even if you are not doing what everybody else is doing, even if you didn't raid the White House, even if you didn't, even if you're not throwing bottles, even if you're not caught up in chaos, you still have to make sure that you are walking in a spirit of humility. OK, because the moment you think that you got this thing together, the moment that you think that you're better than somebody else, the moment you think that you have no flaws, the moment that you think that you are on the right path and that you are just the, the most pleasing person in the sight of God is the moment that you're getting ready to fall. You got to make sure that you stay low to the ground, stay humble. Because the Bible says that those who humble themselves, God will exalt and there's nothing like being exalted by God because when God exalts you, nobody can bring you down. But if you exalt yourself, then God will allow your pride to cause you to fall. Because those who exalt themselves, the Bible says that God will humble. And so let God exalt you. And, and, and ugh, when he exalts you, he'll, he'll exalt you in due season. He'll exalt you at the right time. Make sure that you are sensitive to what God is saying to you in this moment. Because a moment can elevate your life. 
and a moment can destroy your life. Do you hear me? I said a moment. If you hear God in season and if you hear God in stride, it can change your life. It can change your children's life. It can change your community's life. It can change everybody's life who's connected to you if you hear him in season. But if you miss him when he's speaking. If you miss him when he's speaking. If, you, if you're if caught up in what everybody else is saying, you're hearing everybody but God. You're headed. You're headed in the wrong direction. So make sure that you stay. Stay humble. A time is coming when who you really are is going to emerge when you're less expected. And so this is a this is the best time for all of us to check our hearts. This is this is one of the best time to ask God to move those things out of you. That don't exemplify him. If you got hatred in your heart, you need to ask God to move it. If you got bitterness in your heart, you need to ask God to move it. If you came into 2021 with unforgiveness in your heart, you need to ask God to move it. You said that you were going to let all of that stuff go from 2020. And here we're in the first month of 2021 and you still being controlled by the things you said you let go of. It's time for us to lay prostrate before God and ask him to put us on the potter's wheel. Lord, put me on the potter's wheel. And if you have to remake me, then remake me. If you got to mold me over, mold me over, do whatever you have to do. But by all means, those things that are in me that will bring hurt on other people, that will bring pain to someone else, those things that will bring conflict and chaos in our world. I'm asking you to move that from me. I don't care if you are a Republican, a Democrat. I don't care what you are. If you are a child of God, then that precedes every party or any party you say you support. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Well, I'm a child of God. Because let me tell you something. A Republican can be wrong. A Democrat can be wrong. Everybody can be wrong. But guess what? God is always right. God is always right. And it is crazy to me how everybody wants to get caught up in a party, but it, but nobody wants to get caught up in the Holy Ghost party. When, when are you going to join the Holy Ghost party? You're a Democrat and you're a Republican and you scream that from the rooftop. But how many people are really following God? Because when you're following God, God will have you to be, God will tell you to close your mouth representing the party. And I need you to represent me because I will ask you to do some things that your party won't tell you to do. Yeah. So make sure you walk humbly with your God. Next thing he took. OK, so now he says, OK, stand for what is right without doing what is wrong. Secondly, remember the power of God. It's imperative. I don't care who say they have power in the White House or any other house. Power belongs to God. Hmm. Somebody type that in. I need you to type that in and reflect on it. I need you to declare that over your life. I need you to declare that in your home. I need you to declare that over your atmosphere. Power belongs to God. God is the one who gives man power. God is the one who elevates man. God is the one who, who takes power from man. God is the one in total control. And even when I don't understand what he's doing, I can still declare that power ultimately belongs to God. He's listen, the Bible says that he is the beginning and the end. And if the Bible says that God is the beginning and the end, that means that he manages everything in between. If he's the beginning and the end, what are you worried for? What are you worried about? Because he's at the beginning of it. And guess what? God is going to be at the end of it. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. I said all power belongs to God. There is no person in this earth 
who will not have to answer to God. Every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Power belongs to God. And, and the thing about God, he don't care who likes it. He don't care if you like the fact that, that he's on the throne. He doesn't care whether you like it, whether he has our power or not. God is not concerned with how you feel about his position, about his power. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what your job position is or what your family's name is or what color you are, what party you represent, you still going to have to bow and answer to God. You care how much riches you got? Your riches can't buy you out of that moment when you will have to answer to God. All of creation will stand before God and give an account for their lives, be it good or bad. That goes for every president. That goes for every senator. It goes for every, every, it don't matter who it is. From local to national, every pastor, every deacon, every person, every Human being will stand before God and give account for their life. And so, and, and that's why one of the points that God gave me to give the people is that you got to be humble. Because sometimes a person's position can make them feel invincible. Sometimes a person's color can make them feel uh, superior. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes a person's status in life can make them feel you know, like they have arrived. Paul says it better. He says, he says, you know, I, I have not attained. He says, but one thing I do know, you know, that I'm pressing towards the mark of the high call of God on my life. He says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. And so you, you got to stay humble and remember that our power belongs to God. Our focus has to shift away from what we, um, fr from what we see to what we know. There's a lot that we see, but there should be a lot that we know. You've been going to church for how long? You've been shouting for how many years? You've been calling yourself a Christian for how long? And one of the, one of the saddest things to ever hear is for somebody to say they've been a Christian for 10 years and don't know nothing. And then really, when a person does that, either they were in church and they wasn't being taught anything or they were in church and not paying attention. But either way, it's a sad scenario. Because the word of God has been given to us to navigate us through times like this. We don't live in fear. Because we know what the word of God says. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I hope you're with me. The reason I'm not losing my mind about what's going on in the White House is because I know what's going on in the big house, and that's God's house. What you mean? Y'all caught up in the wrong house. David says in Psalm 23 and verse two, uh, six, you know, I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what my focus is on. Dwelling in the house of the Lord. I'm not trying to go to no White House. I'm not trying to go there. And if you think you're getting ready to go to the White House and you think you're about to storm up in there. You, yeah, you got another thing coming. Don't don't try it. That battle is not yours to fight. So we, it's time for us to, to, to our focus to shift away from what we see back to what we know. OK, first Peter 5, 11 says this to him be dominion to who to God, to God be dominion. Dominion is another word for power forever and ever. Now, that's one thing I know. I know what I see and what you see will sometimes confuse you if you have not been convinced, okay? But I'm convinced. So I agree with what the word of God says in 1 Peter 5, 11, to him be all dominion. 
How long? Forever and ever. What that says to me is that my God is in control. My God still has all power in his hand. My God, his posture on the throne has never shifted or changed. He is still the same God and he is still managing this earth. <laughs> to him be dominion and power forever and ever. Psalm 46.10 says this, be still and know that I am God. Whew, Lord have mercy. I need somebody to type that one in. Be still and know that I am God. Hmm. He told Israel that when Pharaoh was coming, trying to um, overtake the army of Israel and they had the Red Sea in front of them, they were caught in like a catch 22 and they couldn't go backwards because the army would have destroyed them. They couldn't go forward because they would have drowned in the sea. And this is when God showed up and he told the children of Israel, he said, just be still. Don't do nothing. I need you to sit down. I need you to be still and I need you to watch me be God. Sometimes God just wants you to watch him be God. He don't want you to. He don't want you to war. He don't always want you to march. He don't always want you to say something. Sometimes he simply wants you to be still and watch him work. Sometimes I believe we get in God's way. If Listen, let me bring this home to you. If you're in a situation in your personal life and you can't go back and you're having a hard time moving forward, sometimes God will allow you to be caught in a catch-22 or you, it's like you're like a rock in a hard place. In moments like this is when God will... He will move into your situation and he will pull you out of it. And at this moment, you will know that it was not your mama who got you out. It was not your daddy. It was not your finances. It was not your, your circle. It was not your BFF. It was nothing and nobody but God. Most of us would know God the way we know him today if we had not been caught up in a catch 22 or a, like a rock in a hard place. Come on, somebody, you know, good and well, you wouldn't be serving God the way you serve him. If he didn't allow you to hit that brick wall, you know that you wouldn't be serving God the way you serve him. If he did not humble you and bring you down to the dust, you would not know him the way you know him. If it was not for the intimacy that was created during your, yeah, your valley experience. My valley brought me closer to God. When I was lost and didn't know which way to go, that's how I uh, got closer to God. When I thought I knew what I was doing and when I was doing my own thing and when I was hanging out doing everything under the sun, that's when I thought I knew what I was doing. But guess what? That quickly came to an end. And God says, now follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And I don't know what you're dealing with right now, but you might be in a situation where you're caught, you're caught like you're in a, at the crux. You're like at the fork in the road and, and you can't go left or you can't go right. You about to run straight into the fork. Sometimes God doesn't want you to do anything, but be still and behold my glory. Be still. Don't even speak to the matter. Don't even talk about it. Don't even don't don't do nothing. Sometimes I have been guilty of speaking on things that God wanted me to shut up on. I'll go live in a minute about something. I'll go live about something. I feel like I need to speak to the people. But then while I was preparing this, God says, you know what? Because I was wondering, where are all the pastors? Why nobody's speaking to this? And I hear other people saying, why the pastors are quiet and blah, blah, blah. And, and I know that there are times where God says, just be quiet. Close your mouth and let me handle this. He says, this battle does not belong to you. This is beyond you. This is too much for you. All I need you to do right now is pray and let me fight the battle because God don't fight the same way we fight. <laughs> he don't fight the same way we fight. Mm -mm. When God fights, God, one, when God fights, he fights to convert. He fights to convert. 
He will convert anybody who will hear his voice. But those who will not be converted, God fights to destroy. When he opened up that Red Sea, when Pharaoh army was pursuing his people, God drowned them. God drowned the whole army. Why? Because the army was pursuing something that God loved. And if you're being pursued and if people are trying to destroy you and you are intimately acquainted with God and you are a child of God, they better be careful messing with you. They better be careful messing with you. And this is why, because when you are a child of God, the battle shifts from you to him. It ain't your battle no more. If you got a problem with me and you want to destroy me and you want to destroy the work that God has called me to do, your battle ain't going to be with me. Your battle is going to be with the one who called me. This is one of the reasons why David, he was smart enough and wise enough to know that I'm not going to bother Saul. I'm not going to bother Saul, even though Saul is trying to take my life, even though Saul keeps on throwing javelins at me, even though they keep on throwing, trying to take my life. He says, you know what? I'm not going to mess with him because God called him. And if God called him, then it's God's responsibility to deal with Saul. Saul had a jealousy issue. And when people have an issue of jealousy, they will do everything under the sun to try to destroy you. And unfortunately, sometimes people in the church are some of the most jealous people you'll ever meet. Somebody say amen. Some of the people in the church are some of the jeal most jealous people that you'll meet. But God says, don't touch them. Keep your mouth off of them. Don't touch them. Don't try to get back. Don't try to get even. Just be still. And let me handle it. Be still and let me handle this. He says, because if you try to handle it, you're going to get in my way. And if you go to Romans chapter 12, the Bible says, leave room for the wrath of God. He says, never take matters into your own hand. Never repay evil for evil to anyone. And see, some of us was getting ready to try to pay somebody back, was getting ready to go get even, was getting ready to set the record straight. And God tells you this morning, be still and let me handle it. I got you. I got you. Get out my way. God says, I need you to go over there and sit down and be still. And I don't need you texting about it. I don't need you tweeting about it. I don't need you making, uh, I don't need you making no type of videos about it. I don't need you to be subliminal about it. I don't need you to do nothing but go and be still and focus on the mantle that I have placed in your hand for this season. There are people who need to be saved. Go out and feed somebody. Go buy some food and, and pass out some, some hand sanitizer. Go do something, but get Get your mind off of that mess. Your blessing is in serving. And if, and if you got people in your ear distracting you from what God has called you to do, then today is the day you need to realign yourself with him. Somebody type in realignment. I didn't get it right yesterday. I didn't get it right last week. I didn't get it right last month. But Lord, today, I want to realign myself with you. I want to realign myself with you. Now, let me, let me finish what he, what he gave me to give you. Realignment. Okay, so he says, be still, and I'm going to show you that I'm God. Okay, so all this stuff that's going on with this White House issue and the presidency and transferring of power and all of that stuff, God says, uh, uh, this right here, uh, this is a battle for me to fight. He says, just, just let me fight it. Just let me fight it. And, and while I'm fighting, I need you to be still because I'm getting ready to, uh, I'm getting ready to reveal some things through the transferring of power, through the transferring of parties and, and through, uh, all of, uh, all the transitions that are going on in the white house, I'm getting ready to reveal some things locally. I'm getting ready to reveal some things locally. And when God reveals something to you, I hope I hope that you are mature enough and I hope that you're strong enough to handle what he shows to you. Because we're always asking God to reveal things to us, but usually when he shows us some, and I think he'll give us a sneak preview of things that we ask to see and he'll see that we can't even handle the sneak preview. So how are you going to handle the whole thing if you can't even handle Lord of mercy. 
Now, I need you to hear me on this right here. God is getting ready to judge uh, some unjust systems. God is getting ready to, to judge some unjust systems. And in the midst of him judging uh, these unjust systems that he's breaking down, um, there are going to either be some people who are going to be converted, who were a part of, uh, of the system. They were a part of working this system against God's people. They're going to either be converted to righteousness or they're going to, or their true colors are going to be revealed. Okay. Their true colors are going to be revealed and people are going to see them for what they are, or they're going to come into a point of repentance and say, I have been working this system against God's people and I was wrong. It's either you're going to repent or you're going to continue to walk in alignment with a system that God is getting ready to judge. That system is talked about in, uh, in Revelation. If you go to the book of Revelation and you go to um, chapter 17 and I think it's in chapter 14, uh, it's all through there. He talks about the judgment that is going to be upon the Babylonian system. This is the system that many of us are fighting against right now. It is a man-made system to run the world that God is not pleased with, that God is finally bringing down. That God is finally bringing judgment. This is why he says, sit back, be still. This is more than you can handle. I got this. I got this. I'm going to judge the system. I'm going to pull the covers back. I'm going to reveal people. I'm going to show people what they've been dealing with. Because a lot of this stuff we have been, we've known for years, many years, that all of this stuff was going on behind the scenes. But now God says, I'm making it plain to you the type of people that you are. America, home of the free, land of the brave. Mm, there's a lot of enslavement going on. And God is getting ready to break the system. God is breaking the system. And God is bringing judgment. And whoever refuses to let go of the system. See, because to be a part of the system means that um, it can be lucrative for you. Okay? It can be lucrative for you if you are a part of the system that is uh, uh, suppressing other people that is hurting other people, that is pushing other people into bondage, it can be lucrative for some. And that's why they support the system. But this is that system that is connected to the Babylonian system that God talks about or that John talks about in the book of Revelation that God is going to judge. He's getting ready to hit their pockets. He's getting ready to hit the pockets. God knows where to hit a man or a woman. He knows where to hit them. And he's going to hit them right in their pockets. And everything that they have been relying on in this system is getting ready to crumble. Because one thing they forgot about is that this system has feet of clay. This system has feet of clay. Just like the Roman Empire had feet of clay. You better learn. You better read your Bible. And anything with feet of clay can be strong up top. But if your feet are feet of clay, baby, you're going to fall. Mm. Check the feet. God is foot checking. God is foot checking. Not only, not only is this system going to fall, but a lot of people... Um, a lot of people who call themselves Christians or believers, um, they got they got clay feet. They got clay feet, meaning that they, they were making a profession of something that they really were not. Oh, the, and the evangelicals, that's a whole nother sermon. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. God is even revealing all of these folks who say that they are believers and they're for everybody. And, and we are all Christians and we are all under God. All of that stuff has been taught for so many centuries. Now God is revealing that anybody can say that they're a Christian, but everybody ain't a believer. Everybody ain't a believer in the word of God. Everybody does not believe the God of the Bible. They believe in a God. They believe in a God. And I'm, 
I'm at a point in my life where I'm believing that there are many branches of Christianity. There are many different branches of Christianity. <laughs> there, there, and then there are a lot of Jesuses that ain't the Jesus of the Bible. Y'all better wake up. I'm talking about stay woke. Some people still sleep. Even some of the people who are saying stay woke ain't woke. They saying that in their sleep. Let me. We're getting ready to witness the crumble of an empire. And remember that you heard God say it through Pastor King. You getting ready to witness the crumbling feet of an empire. And so uh, remember God's power. And this is my last point and I'm out of here. Ugh. I really had more, but let me just get down to the last point. Uh, the last point is this. Do not fear. Do not live in fear. God will take care of you. That, that's what I want to leave you with. You know, we said a lot this morning, but all of this is not said so that you can live in fear. You don't have nothing to worry about if you are in Christ. If you are a child of the most high God and, and if you read the book of Revelation, uh, a lot of people are afraid to read it because they, they, it's a lot of judgment in the book. It's a lot of symbolism in the book. Um, <clears throat> but actually, uh, the book of Revelation is not judgment against you. If you are a child of God, if you read the first three chapters of the book of Revelation, then that book, uh, it speaks to the church. It speaks to you. But after that, after chapter three, when you go into verse four, uh, chapter four, then, you know, you're going to see a, a whole lot of different judgment after that. But the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, the book of Revelation is about Jesus. And if you got him and if you're in him, then uh, you don't have anything to worry about. OK, so don't live in fear. God will take care of you. Second um, Timothy one and seven. <clears throat> and I'm bringing this thing on in. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you power. God has given you power. God has, uh, has given you love and God has given you a sound mind. Those are the three things that you need to avoid living in the spirit of fear. You need power, dunamis. That, that means that you're walking in God's word. You're, you're walking in his authority. You are saying about yourself and about your situation, the very same things that God has said about your situation. You will not take anything less. You will not take anything more. You are going to reiterate what God has already said about you in his word. That's walking in power. Okay. Love. You got to eat. The Bible says, love your enemies, <laughs> love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. And listen, you can't do that in your flesh. I'm sorry. You can't do it in your flesh. But with God, all things are possible. OK, and uh, a sound mind, a sound mind means that you are uh, you're living a rational life. You, you can make calculated decisions. And it's very important to be able uh, to be even in the midst of chaos to still be calculated. OK, I'm in chaos, but I'm still calculated. I see the confusion, but I'm still calculated. This is bothering me and it's, it's vexing my spirit, but I'm still calculated in how I move. OK, so God has given you the power to move like that. OK, so uh, be careful of the spirit of fear. And the last thing I need you to be careful of is the spirit of worry and anxiety, the spirit of worry and anxiety. Uh, as a matter of fact, second Peter uh, one and three says this by his divine power. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. And so I need somebody to type this in. And I'm asking you to type this in because I believe it's a way that we can declare it over our lives. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Not only do I want you to type this in, but I need you to believe this for yourself. I need you to believe this for your children. I need you to believe this for your household. We lack nothing. Every need is met. Every need is met. Even, I, even though I might not be able to see it with my natural eyes, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. 
Okay. And while I'm trying to figure it out, God has really already worked this thing out. He's already worked it out. So I'm declaring this over my life because the Bible says that I have the power to speak those things that are not as if they are. OK, and so that's exactly what I'm doing. If the Bible tells me that there's power, uh, the power of life and death in my tongue, in my tongue, that means that I have the ability to speak life over my situation where everybody else is speaking death over other people. You know, I'm speaking life over myself. So it doesn't even matter what somebody says about me or what they how they feel about me, because every single day I'm going to speak life over me. If nobody else speaks life over you and if nobody make declarations over your life, then you need to make declarations over your life. That's your responsibility. That ain't even your pastor's responsibility to be declaring over your life that and your health that you are healthy and all is well with you. That's your responsibility. And if you love you, then that's something that you need to get in the practice of doing. Stop putting all this pressure on pastors to be what God has already given you the power to be to yourself. My pastor ain't called me. My pastor ain't talked to me. My pastor ain't did this. My pastor ain't did that. Hell, we all are fighting the pandemic too. We all are trying to survive. That means that there are some things that you need to do for yourself. If you want to sink in the midst of a pandemic, you sink. I'm not sinking. Let me tell you why I'm not sinking. I'm on a firm foundation. My hope is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's the foundation that I'm building on. And if you are building on that foundation, then you're not going to sink. But if you're building your foundation on your pastor, baby, you're going to sink. If you're waiting on a man to make your life better or a woman to make your life better, you're waiting on the right one to come and you ain't the right one for you, you got a problem. How are you going to expect the right one and not be the right one? How? You put more, you put more pressure on other people to be something to you that you're not even to yourself. Come on, somebody. And those of you who feel like you came into 2021, you lonely and ain't nobody sent you no flowers and nobody sent you a card and nobody did this for you. You on that, that you, you on that soapbox having a pity party, send yourself some flowers. Send yourself some flowers and go buy a card and write in it and write to your deeper self. Write your own affirmations in the card and read them to yourself. We got to we got to get up off of what people not doing for us. What are you doing for you? And what are you doing for God who wakes you up every day? What are you doing for the one who provides and makes a way out of no way for you? What are you doing for him? How are you impacting this world to make it a better place? What is your contribution to the kingdom of God? I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Even if I'm, if, it, if it looks like I'm lacking something, I'm still going to declare it over my life until God works it out. I lack nothing. You can be sick in your body. I'm healed. I'm well. By your stripes, I'm healed. You, it doesn't negate the fact that you feel pain in your body. It doesn't negate the fact that you don't feel good. But I'm going to keep on declaring over my life that I am healed because God's word says that I am. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, every person mentioned in that chapter was a person who died, but they died believing God. Even if they didn't get the promise, they still died in the right mind frame, right mindset, right heart. They died believing God. And when I when I leave this place, I don't care how I leave or how it looks. I'm going to leave believing God. What about you? This is the last verse I'm going to give you. Philippians 419 says this, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There it is. So those of you who keep calling about that chick, that stimulus chick, man, <laughs> I, listen, that stimulus chick ain't going to change your life. That stimulus chick, man, we appreciate the little $600. <clears throat> Or those of you who got multiple kids, 1,800. You know, those of you who got multiple, multiple kids, maybe, you know, 2,400 or something like that. You know, but listen, with or without a stimulus check, 
God's still going to keep you. That's what he wanted me to tell you. With or without a stimulus check. I don't care if it's 200, 2,000, or 4,000. Don't sell your soul for a stimulus check. Because God promised to take care of you. He promised. He, the Bible says that my God will supply all your needs. Not Trump, not Biden, and no other president. But God will. Somebody type in God will. I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm getting excited. God will. Even if you don't, God will. Even if they don't sign the bill, God will. Because he promised to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And not only that, but he promised to never leave me and to never forsake me. And so once again, I say do not live in fear. God will take care of you. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? <laughs> the Lord God Almighty. He's mighty in battle. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. God has been faithful. He has been faithful since day one. He's never turned his back on you. And for those of you who's experienced loss in uh, 2020, maybe in 2021, you probably lost a loved one due to COVID-19. And some people had to re realign themselves, reposition their whole life, new jobs, new start, you know, just everything. Listen, don't dis don't despise it. You know, God knows what he's doing. And even if you don't understand it, just continue to, to be like Job. Keep praising God through it all. Keep praising God through it all, because there is a blessing on the other side. There is a blessing on the other side. And so uh, I think I'm done. Uh, continue to uh, pray without ceasing. Pray for one another. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ and pray for what's going on at the on a high level, you know, at the White House, uh, in the nation, in the world. Pray for our local uh, politicians. Uh, pray for um, our churches. Uh, pray for the unsaved. Uh, by the way, God is still saving people. If you, just in case some of y'all didn't know that, uh, that's his, pr his primary reason for sending Jesus. Uh, I think Luke nineteen ten says the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And this is the last thing I'm going to say, and I'm out of here. I'm praying that God will give the church an appetite to save souls again. I pray that God will give because the church has become intolerable or intolerant. They like we we look down on people. We look down on on struggling folk. I don't, I don't fool with people like that. I don't, I don't I just don't prefer to be around uh Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. I rather not. I rather be around people who will be like Jesus uh when like he called Levi out of his tax booth and said follow me. And he called Zacchaeus down out the tree and said, follow me. I must come home with you. Uh, he told the woman who was caught in adultery, uh, go and sin no more. You know, uh, Jesus, the one who uh, healed the leopard, uh, the one who healed the man with the withered hand, the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus' daughter, you know, uh, called the fishermen from their job and said, follow me. That That's that's the type of ministry that we all should have. We should minister to the people that Jesus ministered to. We're too busy trying to minister to church folk who think they already got it together. And that ain't the way. You know, Jesus said, I come for the sick, for those who know they need a physician. And that's who he's after. He's after sick folk. He's after people who know they got issues, people who know that they, they need a little help. They need some encouragement. They need some inspiration. They need salvation. They need all of that. And only he can provide it. But he's providing it through you. We got to become missionaries again. And I'm not talking about a missionary as in going overseas. You need to go in your community. 
Instead of talking about how bad it is in the villages or how bad it is in East Lake or how bad. It, no, actually, it ain't that bad. It's worse in Washington. Hello, somebody. It's worse in Washington than it is in East Lake or any other place that y'all try to deem or demonize. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, God will take care of you. I want to extend an invitation for salvation. Um, there may be someone here who don't know the Lord for yourself. Like grandmama probably prayed for you, but it's time for you to uh, develop a relationship with him for yourself. And the only way you can do that is by asking him to come in. Who? Jesus. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if people don't get saved in this season, then um, I don't I don't know what I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. If, if, if times like this won't run you to God, if times like this won't make you do an inventory, a thorough evaluation or cause you to probe your own life, then I don't know what will. If this won't have you thinking that we are approaching end times and that you should be getting your kids saved and you should be uh, speaking Christ to your grandkids and you need to uh, to share the gospel with the people that you love the most. If you if you won't do it now, you will never do it because we are living in perilous times. We are living in perilous times. And, if, and there is no better time to have a relationship with the father than now. Talk to your kids. Pull them to the side. Turn the phone off. Take it from them and talk to them about their relationship because everybody is going to die. Like, like come on now. Prince died. Michael Jackson died. Kobe Bryant died. Come on. Some of the people that you love most have died. So you, 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 you don't think about death. You know how many funerals I have preached? I think about death all the time. I don't fear it, but I'm certainly not oblivious to it. It's coming. It's coming. Whether you ready or not, it's coming. The Bible says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may grow a heart of wisdom. And if this season won't grow your heart in wisdom, nothing will. Nothing. For some people, not even a near-death experience will help them. Not even a near-death experience. After Michael Jackson and Prince died, boy, I was like, ooh. And then when Kobe Bryant died in the plane crash, I said, oh, whoo, that shook me. Then Jesus died. But the good news about that is that he didn't stay in the grave. That's where our hope comes from. It comes from the fact that Jesus died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose with all power in his hands. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the majesty making intercessions for you and me. And since he got up, guess what? You can get up too. And that's the hope that we want to instill in you. But the only way to have that benefit is to be in Christ. Be in Christ. you got to have a relationship with him. So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. And so what I want to do before I get up out of this uh, video is I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And also, um, I want to give you all an opportunity uh, to give, you know, to sow into good ground because it's certainly good ground because we know that people are being blessed uh, on many different levels in many different places. And you, of course, you can uh, cash app Inner Peace Church. Or you can give by text and give to 423 um, No, no, no. 301-555. What is it, Tab? 301-5545. Thank you. You can text give to 301-5545. Or you can go to our website, 
which is www.innerpeacechurch.org, and you can give that way. But let me pray with you before you go. Um, Father, we come to you today, and we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for what you are doing in this season. We thank you for what you have revealed and what you continue to reveal. We pray, God, that you would uh, make us strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, putting on the full armor of God. We pray, Lord, for peace, uh, though we know that a sword has come. We pray, God, that you give us peace with you, peace within ourselves and peace with one another. We give honor to your name because your name is worthy to be praised. We thank you, God, for breaking curses off of families. And we thank you for this curse that you are breaking off this nation. We know that judgment has hit the U.S. We know, God, that you are moving and that you are up to something. We know that you are judging unjust systems. You are judging suppression. You are breaking the spirit of depression off of your people. You are exalting yourself in this nation. We thank you for being our protector and provider. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we can still live our best life right here in this earth. And we know that the best is yet to come. We thank you for strengthening our spirits. We thank you for encouraging us. We thank you, uh, God, for uh, lifting us up and exalting yourself through us. Thank you for the mandate that you placed on our lives, the callings, the anointing, the mission. We thank you for the souls that will come into the kingdom by us simply doing what you called us to do. Thank you for an amazing 2021 because the best is yet to come. We love you. We thank you for saving souls. We thank you for drawing people unto yourself. We thank you, God, for making us a new creature in you. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we lift this prayer. We offer it. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to please share the video. Uh, please, please share the video of uh, we want to be a blessing to as many people as we possibly can. Uh, this morning, I, I just didn't know. I didn't know how this was going to come out. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know. I know what God gave me, but I, I couldn't articulate uh, how it was going to come out of my mouth. And I pray that it was well received uh, by the people of God. We know uh, and that you will uh, be a blessing to somebody else and that you will share with others. Uh, something that was shared with you that actually stood out. Uh, but certainly remember the power of God. I don't care how it looks. Uh, there's no power greater than the power of our God. And remember to stand for what's right, even in the midst of all this wrong stuff going on. Walk humbly with God. Do justice. Treat people right. Treat people right. Don't do people how they do you. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone, okay? And uh, I will see you all Wednesday uh, for a Bible study. And I am going to be very prayerful <clears throat> about what I teach Wednesday. You know, um, I look forward to it. I love you all. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you once again for joining the live and just being so active in it. Uh, Pastor King, Inner Peace Church, 2125 Tunnel Boulevard. We love you. God bless you. We're out.